Commissioner Anna? Commissioner Trujillo? Here. Commissioner Gandhi? Here. Commissioner Sanchez? Here. Commissioner Butcher? Here. And Mayor Gomez? Here, thank you. All right, if uh, Commissioner Trujillo will now lead us in the invocation of the Pledge of Allegiance. We please bow your head. Uh, Lord, this evening we want to thank you for uh, the spring that's come upon us. Uh, we ask you once again, uh, let it be fruitful with our community. Allow us to, to uh, come out of this small depression that we've been in with oil and gas, um, and as well as may you help us uh, with a lot of uh, within the community and aliven up the community once again. And may we all work together to move this community forward. In Christ, we, we name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I salute the flag of the state of New Mexico and the city symbol of perfect friendship among the United Cultures. I say liberty. He was lifting in that song. Yeah, right after I salute the flag of New Mexico. At least I can start. All right, I'll uh, entertain a motion for approval of agenda. I make the motion to approve the agenda as submitted. Second. We have a second. Any discussion among the commission? Seeing that there is none, we'll take it to a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh -huh. Motion carries. <laughs> sorry, we're just. That's all right. There's a technical sideboard. I'm sorry. Technical Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, very good. All right. Um, I'll entertain a motion for consideration of the regular meeting minutes of March 27, 2017. We have a motion. Second. We have a second. Any discussion? All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. All right, very good. Commissioners and staff report. We'll start with Mr. Wyatt. Go ahead. What? Mayor and commissioners, I do have something to report this time. Okay. <laughs> I'd like to give you guys an update on the judicial complex um, utility running moving. Okay. We did hire TLC plumbing out of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, the judicial complex actually hired them to do their moving of the utilities. So they continued on and continue doing ours. The sewer is almost 100% complete. They got both manholes still incomplete, but the transition of the sewer line is, and they will be going to the eight inch water line that we agreed to replace in the middle of Love Street. So when they do the, the new curving walkway, nothing will ever, we'll have brand new utilities. So oh, we're not having breaks or anything like we normally do. But just wanted to give you an update on that. Fantastic. And uh, speaking of which, can you uh, uh, update us on the, uh, the water meter changes? Water meter change out, I believe we have installed almost 500 three quarter inch meters. We are working on, we do have an additional 500 one inch that we ordered, pre ordered. Um, they haven't found as many one inch as we'd like to see, but they, um, I think 50 to 75 one inch they changed out. We have put an additional 500 meters on order for three quarter. They're um, continuing. Their survey, I believe they're in book 14, moving on to 15, as far as their survey to see which meters we need to order. And as far as the change out process, the crew is in book nine, moving on to book 10. And we have 19 votes total. Okay. So we, we're more than half, actually I would say a quarter of the way right now in change outs, but we're halfway in the books. Uh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Commissioner. Uh, are we doing this in house? Actually, no, we hired um, UMC out of, I believe, south, um, actually northeast New Mexico. They came down and we actually put it out to bid and they got the contract to change that. Anybody else? Any questions for me? I just had an, an additional question. What? Any any issues with the lines uh, breaking once the meter is is installed and, uh, and uh, I guess, uh, opened up? We've had, um, on the field reports that they've been turning into us, we've had probably, I would say, 15 to 20, where they've actually had something bust, like a, the pipe break or something, mm -hmm. on the customer's side, and they fixed it because in the contract, they were responsible for anything busted. Yeah. And on 
our side, we've had possibly, I would say probably 10, 10 to 20 yeah. on our side where we've had to go out and assist them in <coughs> the buds or the stops or anything like that. But on a, on a good note, everything seems to be good, um, notifying the customers and everything. Very good. All right. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yes, sir. Uh, I was, Mayor Commissioner, I'd like to follow up on your question, Commissioner Sanchez. The reason we can't do this in-house is because of the pro, uh, the cost of the project and assuring that we pay the uh, labor wage rates established by the state. Uh, so we're required to actually, uh, I guess, outsource this project because we simply can't meet those labor wage rates that are required. We used to do it, didn't we? Or I think we did. I don't know the la the first round that we had done with the radio reads. I don't know who did that, but uh, c just simply considering the project cost, uh, by law, we're required to go out. We, and we do actually the water department for a new service. They are they go and install the new service, and if say any one of you guys wants your meter changed out, previous to this we would have went and changed it out in house. But since the project cost and how many meters there are need to be changed out. <clears throat> so 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 even say if I wanted one change, uh, we still have to get the contractor. You could do it in house. Yes. Just for one, you know. Just for one service or okay. one meter. Yes. We. And I guess I had a question for why don't I don't know our big green monster or truck down there. It's at Amos. What's what's wrong with the that? green machine? Yeah. Actually, um, Griffin okay. Diesel Supply or Diesel. Automotive got our contract in December. I'm not exactly sure. Um, we've been having some issues with some solenoid valves and everything. So that's where it's actually down getting serviced or getting checked out. Oh, so it's not, it's not broken, it's just getting serviced. No, it's just getting serviced or checked in. We've been, um, the main gate in the back, the adjustments and everything on the actuators, they've been giving the wastewater department some problems. So that's more than likely why it's down. Man, that's the most I've heard you talking about in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm good for about yeah. 10 minutes. <laughs> I didn't know you had it in you, man. That's wow. good. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate it. Any other, other questions from the commission? Well, I, well, I guess I do. I, I, I know uh, I, James and I had spoke about this. Uh, you know, our pool, that issue, we fix that whole thing coming down. We need to just take that thing down and throw it away and never put that uh, stuff up again. That's my personal opinion. We're, we're just throwing away money, buying it, put it up, wind blows it down, buy it, put it up. I, you know, say it's something we just don't need anymore, you know. What is it? The, the netting. The netting, the netting. Or the pool, yeah, that's <laughs> something that needs to be etched, you know. And I know we need to bring that up, but I'm just mentioning that. It's, we need to just pull it all down. You know, if you're going to have perverts drive by and look, they could see through that anyway. That's just what, you know, you just got to put it out there like that. That's not easy. That's basically all I got to say on that. You know, we do need to take it down. It looks bad. Any response to that? Yes, go ahead. Um, actually, the pool's not my It's Dennis's, but. Uh, <laughs> Mary, Mary Commissioners, uh, actually, Dennis and I were visiting about that uh, on Friday. And uh, we already have some additional material that was already ordered anyway. We're going to try one other variation of it. If this doesn't work, then yes, I would agree with you, Commissioner, that uh, we're finding an uphill battle. Wouldn't that now also assist you to help in keeping that pool clean as well? I mean, with all the sand and dirt going in from that east side, you figure that at least be helping in some sort. Uh, Mayor Commissioners, it does help. Uh, we have one other option, but then you run into a security issue uh, without being able to clearly see with our units patrolling out there. Uh, we are, uh, we did find another solution for some additional lighting that's extremely cost effective uh, that we're going to be implementing. But if we were to put up like a metal fence, uh, we, our police officers still wouldn't be able to see. So, and unfortunately, the width of the, the gaps in the chain link. It will not allow us to use those slats that they just don't make slats that narrow for that style of fence. <coughs> Guess what? I did have one, have one more talking about metal fence. Um, the street yard project, fence project, they're about 65% complete. They're on the last, last section of it. Everything is looking 
excellent out there. The, the crew is working really good. Um, you guys get a chance to drive by and look at it. They still need the last corner post and the fence will, or the gates will need to be made. But I believe they poured the footing, the concrete footing for the last section um, today. So they will be more than likely finishing with everything by Friday. Are you done, Wayne? Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Gary. If I may, I'll keep this brief. I just want to follow up with the question that we had uh, a couple weeks ago when we were asking <coughs> about the uh, CLS sewer equipment expense of $8,263. Uh, that was a situation where the sewer treatment plants sewer vacuum truck or vacuum wash truck, whatever they call it. It, it just needed some maintenance, but it's a, the company that we bought it from, they're a sole source agency, and rather than having to drive it someplace in Texas, we had to spend some money to have their main mechanic come out here uh, from Richardson, Texas, to fix the boom and the water pump and some other things on it, and that's why it was $8,600. And then another note, uh, we're working on our budget. We're on schedule for our April 20th meeting, and I'd forgotten what time we were going to meet. But we're preparing for that, and we'll be ready. Okay. You did inform Anna about the snacks and water and so forth, right? About that meeting? I told her those were for me. <laughs> Gary, you want to mention the, uh, the conference call we're going to have on Wednesday, if you don't mind? Yeah, if I may, uh, we're working to resolve some challenges <coughs> that we've been faced with with Tyler uh, Technologies related to the implementation of our ENCODE software. And we've scheduled a <coughs> meeting with them this Wednesday at 2 o'clock to sit down with more than a couple of individuals with their company to really discuss uh, some of the issues we've been faced with and and my fellow commissioners, if you have any concerns, you know, feel free to give with Gary so he can convey them as well. Uh, I'll be present, but, um, you know, he's the, the guy in the know. So if you guys have any concerns, feel free to visit with him, and then we'll take it from there. I appreciate you doing it, Gary. What day is that again? For the Tyler Encode meeting? Yes. That's this Wednesday at 2 o'clock. Oh, I might have to move to the conference room instead of my office. Well, we can't be present because it will violate the Open Meetings Act, but uh, because of the quorum, but uh, the issues can be conveyed to you, mm -hmm. right? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. All right. Very good. All right. Anything else, Gary? Uh, no, sir. That's it. All right. Joanna? Nothing to report. All right. Very good. Anna? Nothing to report. Thank you. <coughs> Commissioner Sanchez? Well, a little bit. Yes, sir? I, uh... <laughs> You got the shingles. No. Man, it is painful. <laughs> is that right? I didn't know if I was going to make it or not, but I made it. Oh, wow. Uh, if you see me get up and leave, uh, I get some spasms. Some, I mean, I feel like somebody's putting a hot iron on my back. I didn't know that. Me, I just, I had to fall. I was in church uh, for Chris Aguilar's funeral, and, and it hit me, and I'm glad I was in the back. And I stepped out and found a hallway and found a little room with a couch, and man, I just fell on my knees and cried out to God. And I, well, that's the way it is. So I, hope, I hope none of you ever get it. And I, I, I recommend that if you uh, haven't had a shot for see when you get one, because it, it is painful. I tried to get one, they said it's too late. You already have it. So I recommend it for you that, that don't have it to get it, because it, uh, it's terrible. So. That's all I got to report. Well, I hate to hear that, Commissioner. Hope you feel better. Keep me in your prayers. Absolutely. <laughs> we got you. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Commissioner Butcher? No, I believe I've said all I have to say about that. All right, very good. <laughs> Thank you. I don't have anything. Commissioner Thank you. Commissioner Gant? The only thing I have is to mention is we rode around with the Keep Loving the Beautiful.
committee on Saturday, and I want to commend the city for the most part. Um, most of the residents keep their houses and their yards up pretty well. There's a few areas, don't get me wrong, that you know really draw your eye to them, but um, you know encourage people to clean their their curbs and their walkways where the grass is growing up. Seems like that seems to be a trend that we forget to do. Um, but there's a couple of areas that we probably need to really discuss somewhere down the road on the east side of town. But other than that, I really want to commend the community. Um, don't get me wrong, there's some areas that we really need to work on, but for the most part, the places we drove were extremely well kept. <laughs> Thank you for that, Commissioner. All right. Chief? Not another report. Chief? I actually have something to report. Yes, sir. Go right ahead. <laughs> Just uh, got back from Ohio, went and, and did the final inspection on our newest ambulance. Um, it looks really nice. We should be getting it and put in service by the first part of May. So, Very good. looking forward to that. Um, also, we have a uh, Skywarn class, a uh, storm spotter class, coming up tomorrow night at the chamber from 6.30 to 8.30 in the evening. So, if anybody would like to join for that. That's open to the public, whoever wants to participate? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And be trained for that? Yes, sir. Okay. Very good. All right. And that's all I have. Thank you, Chief. Appreciate it. James. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, we'll be, our budget work session, uh, of course, is next Thursday, April 20th at 5.30, and we'll have it here. Uh, that way we can do the live stream. Uh, we did attend a meeting last week, I believe it was Tuesday, for DOT, mm -hmm. correct? Uh, it was a meeting for the project designers for the Main Street uh, rework project that the state is funding. Uh, they presented a couple of different options, uh, kind of reviewed, uh, reviewed their data. In about a month to a month and a half, uh, they'll have another public meeting. Uh, they're going to work with the city to help publicize that more. Uh, a lot of folks, uh, to be honest, the only individuals who were there were city staff. Uh, because they simply put the advertisement in the newspaper. Uh, but they're gonna work with us to help get the word out so we can get more input on the Main Street project. But they talked about uh, how the, uh, what was driving a lot of their designs and uh, it's based on traffic manual uh, and uh, another highway safety manual, a lot of federal requirements that they have. Uh, but they should have the preliminary design completed by fall of 2017. And it appears that right now everything's still on schedule, and hopefully they can start construction in 2018, but we'll see uh, how finances go. Uh, we are, uh, we did talk with the uh, lead traffic engineer for NMDOT District 2, and we'll be submitting a letter for them to go ahead and do another study uh, at 5th and Avenue D. No, I'm sorry. Yes, 5th and Avenue D for a stoplight. They'll have to get tra updated traffic counts, and also at Deer Dove and Main Street by the hospital entrance, uh, just to see if there's been any change and if the, the counts actually warrant uh, installation of a traffic signal. Officer Speed? Yes, sir. Ah, uh, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Are we gonna call that the same? Sun, Commissioner Sanchez stoplight? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, we'll go into a public comment section now. If uh, anybody wishes to address the commission, you may do so at this time. Anybody from the public? Yes. First of all, my name is Come on up here, everybody about our annual cleanup day coming up on the 29th of April. Um, I set the flyers out for everybody. There's more out front if anybody wants one. Just so um, everybody's aware, we'll start at 8 o'clock in the morning. We'll have our cleanup and then we're going to have some hot dogs served for everybody who worked the cleanup. And then we have some uh, entertainment and some, we have a fundraiser auction and we have some different things planned for the afternoon. Very good. Where are we going to meet at? It will be down in front of the museum okay. on Central. They're between Washington and Main Street. Oh, or, I mean, Love and Main Street, yeah. What kind of entertainment? We actually have uh, three girls that signed up to sing. 
different songs, and we're going to have a stage set up. We have a dance troupe coming in to do a little program, and so far that's the only entertainment we have yet. Very good. We're working. Well, appreciate that. Thank you. Any questions about the commission? <coughs> okay. Anybody else wishes to address the commission at this time? Seeing as there is no one else, we'll go on into non-action items. James. Uh, Mayor, commissioners, actually, uh, the first item is our third quarter financial report, and I'll let uh, Mr. Chapman take the lead on this. If I may, your mayor and commission, we are projecting our revenues to come in short by basically 80, 82% of what we had budgeted. Of Fortunately, on the positive side of that, as you can see on this report, that uh, our departments are doing a good job of keeping their expenditures under control, so we're not exceeding that. <coughs> However, it does mean, though, of keeping our service levels at the level that we're going, uh, we're going to see a reduction of over 1.5 million, and we're projecting basically 1,588,000 of a reduction of our current cash reserves that we started this fiscal year with. And that should still keep us above our, uh, definitely the 35% uh, reserve requirement, maybe even closer to 40. However, moving in the next fiscal year, it leaves us with less cash to work with, and we will likely exceed our, if we keep the service levels the same, likely exceed or have to have our uh, reserve requirements reduced in order to maintain same service levels. But you know, it's the economic times, it's really reduced, and we're really impacted by what's going on in the oil industry. However, we really are functioning well, and as you can see, doing a good job of keeping a handle on the expenditures. Do you have any questions for me? Anybody from the commission? <coughs> James, so. Yeah, James, uh, for our next fiscal year, can, can you uh, talk to with our insurance agency, see if there's any uh, projections on any type of increase or anything like that that help help me make decisions as well for our employees and, and so forth? Is there going to be any rate changes, either good or bad? I'd like to know that before we do our budget here. Well, if I may, I'll intercede for you on that one. Related to our general liability, auto insurance, and things <coughs> of that nature, we were told to anticipate an increase of basically only about 2%, but a lot of that has to do with the history of the city, that we have a long-standing uh, relationship with our insurance company, and they're doing their best to uh, acknowledge, one, the fact that we uh, have lower accident rates and liability issues, but then at that same time, uh, they have to give us an increase. In regards to health insurance, it was uh, quite a challenge. The, the overall national average is about a 15% increase in health insurance coverage. But we were fortunate, again, due to a long-standing relationship with our company, we were able to negotiate only a 5% increase. Yeah, so we can have something. Is that what you're pro projecting for next year, 5%? Or the health insurance, insurance is only 5%. It's a projection for the 2% on the liability. And, for uh, for 18, 2018. Yes, sir. Okay. Gary, you mentioned that you were able to negotiate a 5%. What were they proposing initially? What was it, 6.2? 6 6.1%. Okay. So all that would be on our projections, right? <coughs> for our outlay for the budgeting? Yes, sir. Okay. I mean, just for me, that'd be helpful. Uh, no surprises, put it that way. <laughs> Any other questions about the commission? Mm -hmm. right. Anything else on that, James? No, sir. We'll go into action items now. I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to consider resolution 2017-34. Approve of, to advertise an ordinance that, would, that amends chapter 12.28 of the Lovington Municipal Code Public Park Regulations. I'll second it. We have a second by Commissioner Butch. <coughs> James? Yes, Mayor and Commissioners. Uh, last, well, uh, actually, I believe it was March 20th uh, of 2017, our Parks and Rec Board uh, met. And these were requests that were 
one, part one was actually driven by a citizen's request and part two was uh, staff created. So part one of this ordinance actually is uh, allowing uh, special dispenser permits or public celebration permits to be issued uh, for a location within Chaparral Park. Uh, so th this would allow for uh, only New Mexico alcohol and gaming approved permits to be issued. This wouldn't allow for just general public consumption within the park. It would be the same as if we were having an event in the downtown area where they are issued that special dispenser or picnic license. Uh, it could only be used for public events, so you couldn't use this for private family events, uh, but it, and it would uh, just be uh, regulated st strictly by state standards. Uh, this was, uh, uh, of course, amending the ordinance because our ordinance right now prohibits any type of alcohol or nar narcotic uh, possession or usage within our parks. Part two uh, was actually uh, amending the rules for the use of Chaparral Lake to incorporate uh, the addition of non-powered watercraft, uh, canoes, kayaks, uh, couldn't have any type of a motor, whether it was electric or combustion. Uh, the good news is, is that we, since we are not issuing this or renting out this equipment, that uh, citizens will be responsible for bringing their own. We checked with our insurance provider, and they said there is absolutely no uh, increase uh, to your premiums or any liability. The courts have viewed that if you do have signs used at your own risk, that is enough uh, uh, as far as coverage for us. Uh, some of the additional things that uh, we did incorporate this and in looking at other lakes that allow for usage of watercraft is uh, you keep, in order to operate the equipment, uh, you had to be over 13 years of age. However, if you're a passenger and you're under the age of 13, we would require the use of a life preserver. Um, of course, uh, the question came up with enforcement. This would really just be a complaint driven uh, type issue. In addition, uh, you, you have to follow all your regulations. You have to operate in a safe and prudent manner. Uh, you can only use it during daylight hours. So we did look at different areas of our lake as far as where you would put in. We would eventually need to develop this. Part of our long-term plan with the park is to add more bridges and also a dock, uh, <coughs> a fishing dock, or even a, a place you could put a kayak in down here on this southern part of the lake. So three sites that we looked at, uh, in order to access the east, east side of the lake, the pr primary area uh, would actually be this, this particular section down here. Take it a second for the picture to pull up, if it will. <laughs> All right, that's good. All right, um, what we have right now is just a, it, it almost looks like a loading ramp, but it's just a spillway. Uh, but there is actually adequate area there for for somebody who's wanting to put in with a kayak or a canoe, they can actually get the, the uh, carry it over to the water and uh, ease, there's ease of access there. Uh, in addition to that, there's another area uh, to access the western portion of the, the lake. It's just on the other side of the bridge. Uh, there's not a lot of rock or debris. They can actually just carry it up to the side of the water and, and go ahead and get in. Uh, there is a third option, of course. This is one of our popular areas for fishing, but it's another area where you don't have a lot of debris or barriers uh, to where an individual could, could put in. So it, the cost, a couple hundred dollars for park signs, uh, that we still need to uh, have all of our ordinances prepared uh, or the park rules and regulations updated and also use at your own risk. Uh, we could actually have another option for use of the lake other than just simply fishing. Uh, so this was presented to the Parks and Recreation Board and uh, with just a few slight changes there recommending that we go ahead and advertise this ordinance and recommend that uh, the Commission approve it. All right, very good. Any questions for the Commission? So, yes, sir. So let number one, it's not tied to this one, is it? It, it is all the same part of the of one ordinance, yes, sir. It is tied to this. Mm -hmm. I can't vote for number one, but I can vote for number two. Okay, so you'll, you'll abstain on the vote, is that correct? You'll abstain from the vote? Commissioner, is that correct? Number one. Okay, I understand that. James, but yes, sir. and you stated that uh, it would be posted, right? These signs would be in posted, right? Is it yes, sir. Few hundred dollars? Oh. Yes, sir. All right, anything else?
else? Any other questions? Yes, sir. James, just so I'm clear, on the public celebrations, you're talking just like Fourth of July or Fourth of Mayo or yes, different sir. activities that we have during the year, not, not on that every weekend. Correct, sir. Sounds good. Thank you. Right. Any other questions about the commission? All right. Without any further discussion, we'll go to a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstain. And Commissioner Sanchez abstains. Very good. Motion carries. All right. James? Oh, I'm sorry. I'll entertain another motion. Make a motion we consider resolution 2017-35. Approval to advertise an ordinance that approves state LEDA funds for the Drylands Brewery project. Second. We have a second by Commissioner Gandy. James. Uh, Mayor and Commissioners, uh, the state of New Mexico, actually, on uh, New Mexico, Lovington Main Street, uh, actually assisted uh, Drylands Brewing Company for uh, applying for uh, funds from the New Mexico Economic Development Department. Uh, they managed to secure $100,000. Uh, this would allow us to advertise an ordinance uh, to execute one an intergovernmental agreement uh, between the state and the Department of uh, Economic Development Department. Uh, which would we would serve as fiscal agent for these funds it would also allow us to execute the project participation agreement between the city and drylands brewing uh, for the same purposes uh, there's no local funds involved in this it's simply we're fiscal agent for the state of new mexico uh, what we would uh, it does have clawback provisions of course uh, they are required uh, through the intergovernmental agreement and project participation agreement to create at least 10 new jobs uh, by December 31st of 2022. Uh, if the facility should close before the end of this agreement, uh, the, the uh, Drylands Brewing would have to pay the funds back to the city. And then, of course, if they fail to hit those target number of jobs, you can see its scale as far as how much uh, funds they would have to uh, reimburse the city. So we are recommending approval to go ahead and advertise this ordinance. Very good. Any questions? Yes, sir. So, so if they went bankrupt and had to turn the thing in, how could they pay the city? If we take over their property? I guess, uh, I mean, I guess it would depend on whether, uh, wh which chapter they decided, whether they were going to pull the plug or reorganize. And so we have to just evaluate it at that point in time. Thank you, Patrick. Anybody else? Any other discussion? All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstain. And Commissioner Sanchez abstains. Motion carries. I'll entertain the next motion. I'd like to make a motion to consider <coughs> resolution 2017-36, approval of the CD CBGD grant agreement between the city and New Mexico Department of Finance. Second to the motion. Okay, we have a second by Commissioner Sanchez, James. Yes, Mayor Commissioners, uh, it seems like we're approving a lot of things for our CDBG, but we finally got our grant agreement. Uh, this grant agreement is going to provide the city around $497,000 for the repair and reconstruction as well as ADA approved sidewalks. Uh, in between 13th and 17th, the area is highlighted on the map. Second Street from Avenue D to Jackson and then Avenue H from 5th Street to Second Street. So this is the agreement necessary to execute between the city and the uh, Department of Finance in order to have access to those funds. Uh, design is underway. Uh, once we have this agreement uh, completed, design will be done, then we'll actually go out to bid uh, for the construction of this project. James, can you, uh, some of this stuff that we approve, um, that it involves financing, road construction, so forth. On our website, can you post that? But but in in text where people understand. <laughs> yes. Uh, you know. Well, Mayor and Commissioners, one thing we do is we have a project portal, and when funds are expended on these large capital projects, uh -huh. uh, we put that information as far as the vendor uh, and also what type of work was done per project. So you can see what the budgeted amount was, but also a running tally. So we haven't had any expenditures for the CDBG, this, this particular road work yet, uh, but when we do, we start adding those to the, to the uh, project portal. I believe it actually started with our fence work that we did around our neighborhood parks, 
I know our uh, splash pad as well as the playground equipment projects are on there in addition to the commercial street projects. So we are putting that on there uh, as far as dollar amounts that are spent and for what. I'm just saying that way the <coughs> Correct. citizens understand that we are focusing yes, sir. on our streets and not, not neglect them. Yes, sir. Good point, Commissioner. Thank you. Well, I've got a question. One yes, sir. Thing. Okay. Uh, concerning that, uh, these funds for the CPT heat, do they, uh, they can be transferred to another project? It's got to be the streets? Uh, correct. Uh, Mayor Commissioners, uh, with this CDBG grant, uh, they had to evaluate the low to moderate income and the projects that are identified on here do meet that fund that that particular funding criteria uh, so to answer your question uh, Commissioner Sanchez no we cannot transfer these funds to another project uh, these funds can only be utilized for this these particular areas that are identified for our streets for sure correct yes sir uh, one one nice thing about the CDBG program that they told us last year um, was that since we, uh, it, or if we have engineered plans already performed, it increases the maximum level of award. Uh, the maximum award that you can receive was 500000 uh, However, if you have engineered plans, which we're already doing a phase two for this on uh, identified streets, uh, we're eligible for up to a million dollars. So part of the engineering services is the design for the phase two of this CDBG project. I was just hoping we could pass them for that city light, for that traffic light, <laughs> but okay. All right. Any other discussion? Like commission? Right. To a vote, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. I'll entertain the next motion. I want to make a motion to consider resolution 217-37, Parks and Recreation Board appointments. I'll second that. We have a second by Commissioner Butcher, James. Uh, Mayor and Commissioners, uh, we did advertise this in the paper. Uh, we discussed this at a couple of different meetings. Staff uh, haven't directly received any uh, recommendations. Uh, we did, uh, uh, Marla Price, who's one of our members, advised that uh, the principal over at the high school did make a recommendation for two individuals, uh, Michaela Franco and Kaylee Skinner for the youth representatives. Uh, it would be my recommendation that uh, we table this resolution until staff can contact these individuals and explain to them that what, what the responsibilities are, unless commission has other appointments in mind. That sounds good. What grades are, are they in, do you know? Uh, these are James? both juniors. Okay. Uh, one serves as the class president and the other one is the vice president. You'll make an am amendment to your motion? I'll make an amendment to the motion that we table. This, this resolution? Resolution 37. Okay. I have to second that. And we have a second. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries to table it at this time. Thank you. I'll entertain the next motion. Make a motion. We consider resolution 2017 38. <coughs> Amusement Carnival, May 11th through 15th, 2017. Second. We have a second by Commissioner Sanchez James. Yes, Mayor, uh, Mayor Commissioners, uh, Ms. Ball found out in our ordinance that our, the carnivals that we have come through town actually have to be approved by, this, by resolution by the City Commission. Uh, so uh, what uh, we have is Bennett's Amusements would like to conduct a carnival the 11th through the 15th over at the Levington Square. Uh, they'll, of course, there's certain require insurance requirements and inspections that they'll have to go through, but this is, uh, we are recommending approval of their request. Okay, any other questions by the commission? Uh, so they, you don't have no problem with their equipment? The logo of their equipment or anything like that on that area? As long as they meet the Carnival Ride Insurance Act requirements and are licensed by the state, uh, there's really not a lot we can do. Uh, like return to weight, you don't think it damaged our streets? I mean, you think it did? No, sir. That's a part of the Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Is that what it's we're doing? Okay, yes, that's yes, yes. I'm sorry. Okay. Yes, it's yeah. You Bob's said downtown. You said <laughs> Bob's parking lot. Bob's, okay. You said downtown. I was like, well, I don't think it's 
<laughs> okay, now, okay, now I understand. Okay, Bob's parking lot. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right, very good. All right, any, any other discussion by the commission? All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. I'll entertain the next motion. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion for a resolution 2017-39, your revocation of bid war to the Pope Water Tower exterior painting. Second. We have a second by Commissioner Trujillo. James. Mayor Commissioners, uh, Wyatt and I are going to tag team this, I guess. But, uh, when, uh, after uh, the award was uh, given to the apparent low bidder, TMI Coatings, uh, of course, Wyatt was directed to go ahead and uh, obtain a copy of their contract and, and get specifics on how they're going to perform the containment. Our bid did not specifically request that they had to be tent, that they had to tent the entire water tower, it's just they were responsible for debris control. So once uh, Wyatt received the contract, uh, he immediately uh, saw, took some issues with it. Uh, for instance, uh, they were requiring that we provide running water and restroom facilities to them during the entire project. Uh, there was the provision in their contract also that should the, the ground be contaminated underneath or around the tower that uh, they would clean it up, however, we would be responsible for disposal of, of the contaminants, uh, which could add, those are some of those hidden costs that weren't identified in the bid. Uh, also, uh, as far as containment, they were just simply going to rely on weather uh, conditions and wind conditions to provide containment, and Wyatt's recommendation was that uh, we seek uh, other options as far as the vendor for this particular company. Is there anything you want to add? I just, I'm, I'm still waiting on some terms and conditions from the next two up. I have not received. I actually received one from m and and under review of it, um, I'm waiting on the next one, which was utility services out of Georgia, Perry, Georgia. And I have not. I've contacted them, let them know, or asked them for their terms and conditions, their contract, and still waiting on a reply from them. But our major thing with the, the new subdivision that's there, antennas on that and mm -hmm. we'll get paying and cover them up it will stop at service internet service are they how are they proposing to uh, protect that to keep them from knocking them out of power that's one thing that we have not I, I believe I can contact we go and ask them exactly if we did tent the I know they will be covered or actually covered up while the, the service or while they're being paid so no spray or anything is done, but I will contact Nico and see if it will interrupt the service, if there is any other, if it does have a tent, put over it. And by that tower, you know, how often, I, I've noticed that we're going to have it repainted, but like, say within six months the tower is running over, what's to assure that it's not going to just look like it does now? Uh, as far as the, the paint quality? I believe the, um, the tower has not been painted since 96 or yeah. prior to that. Um, but just the baby blue that they went with, it's real oxidized right now. Um, with, the, with the tower overflowing and everything, I don't know if we can stop that from happening. We can reduce it, but our pumps, our communication factor with our skated computer is why the tower occasionally overflows. Is, is, is there any way that we could possibly, uh, before we did this, James or yourself to give us an aerial shot of what the thing really looks like. Mm -hmm. you know, we actually, actually blew the, the drone over and did a, a so full did. aerial of the. Of I'd kind of like to see that. I'm not sure about the rest of the commission. I mean, I think it's something we just probably need to just eyeball or whatever. And, uh, and one of one of the other options that um, myself and Darren had talked about is actually the overflow is actually utilized up on the base of the tower right now currently at the catwalk around. What we had talked about doing is possibly extending that all the way down and doing a floodway so it doesn't put that mist off. That way for future, future having the mist go everywhere and the water damage and everything that the 
surrounding complex or the housing development is that we get that water just like our other two towers currently in town avenue d and avenue r we do have a flood the floodway is actually at the base of the tower instead of just an overflow at the top so that would help maintain the covering yes that's mighty fine I just have a quick question. Why has Tim I been advised of the uh, proposed revocation that we're looking at because of the concerns? They did not. Um, I did ask them, and, and when I did contact them, and I followed up with an email about how did they um, to get the surrounding area. How were they going to keep the debris from going? And like James said, with the reply email, is that they were just going to rely on wind and everything else. They were going to stop and they were going to roll on. Um, they did um, in the. In the bid sheet, we did ask them for their um, questions or anything like that. How were they going to do so? And they just they did not reply anything to it as far as the tenting or anything. Okay, very good. Thank you. Any other discussions or questions? Have, yes, sir. One. When was the last inspection done on that? I believe the last um, inspection inside we had done in 2010. We actually had the company out of Farmington, that CW Divers, cleans our tanks yearly. They actually sent a little submarine down inside and did a full inspection while it was in service. They couldn't actually go down the tube because of it was still in service, but everything else inside was structurally sound and everything. Okay. Thank you. All right, good. Any other discussions or questions about the commission? Uh, if not, we'll go. No, I was just going to say y'all are going to get back with, get with Lee Cole and see what we're going to yes, do. Yes, I will. I guess they can afford to have that, that service knocked out for, he so said they'll have that tower down or covered for, what is it going to take, about a couple of weeks? Or? Uh, possibly, I, I would believe that possibly a, a couple of weeks, probably probably two days in pressure washing and cleaning, and then possibly they might be able to do the top in a week as far as the painting. So estimate probably about two to three weeks. All right, thank you. Anything else, Commissioner? If not, um, we'll go to vote. All those for, for approving the revocation of the bid award, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, motion carries. I'll consider the next motion. Make a motion to consider resolution 2017-40, largest tax third quarter funding. Second. We have a second from Commissioner Sanchez. James or Gary? Uh, Mayor, uh, Please do. Mayor, Commission, our single life largest payment is the 171. Hey, Gary, we're talking laundry tax. Oh, laundry tax. Sorry. We're talking. Nice <laughs> motor. <laughs> I'm glad you stopped that. So I know you're. I'm glad you stopped that early. <laughs> you ready? You're taking the offensive already, weren't you? <laughs> 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 I'll do laundry stuff. I'll do laundry stuff. Okay, all right. All right. So, Mayor Commissioners, uh, we, we are estimating that uh, for this quarter that will end June 30th that we'll uh, have estimated revenues available of 41, almost $42,000. Uh, so our largest tax board met last Wednesday, uh, looked at the allocations, and uh, these are uh, the board recommended funding is what uh, the Lodgers Tax Board would like the City Commission to approve. Total of thirty-three seven. Yes, sir. I just had one question. So, so if we compare the numbers from last year, what what, what increase have we seen? Uh, we've seen a pretty well. What we do is uh, when we estimate the available funding, is we look at the previous quarter, and then we automatically deduct twenty percent, uh, just to be on a very conservative side. Uh, so, for instance, last quarter uh, we we prepared the estimated revenue available. Uh, based on the previous quarter, subtracted 20%, we actually were off by $6,000, uh, meaning that we actually had $6,000 uh, in funding extra than we did that we didn't anticipate. So this $41,000 that we have estimated uh, is actually based on that same principle. So with the addition of the other hotel uh, that we have, with the, with the addition of the Comfort Inn, we are seeing an increase. Uh, as, and then also with the events that we have, uh, uh, we've seen an increase in usage. Uh, don't have the actual percentage increase compared, 
uh, but uh, with this, uh, this is actually, this quarter is actually one of our busy, busiest event heavy ones uh, that we have. Yeah, let's see, I'll keep them around here. Yes, sir. Yeah. All right, very good. Any other discussion? I don't know the recommended funding. I'm sorry, what was that? The recommended funding. Well, the recommended funding is based on the funding formula. Right. Well, so, typically they run with that 90% of the time. It just seems like this. Correct. Uh, it just it was way down. off uh, this time based on those evaluations, and uh, we have the additional funds available. The Chamber of Commerce, do they include their fireworks, or who, who does that this year? That is solely on us, Commissioner. Leave a jar right there at the end of the door. <laughs> Any other discussion? No, sir. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> motion carries. I'll entertain the next motion. I make a motion that we consider a council bill. I'll second that. We have a second by Commissioner Butch. <coughs> Gary. <laughs> if I may, your mayor, commission. The single largest payment in our payables this time is our uh, semi-annual uh, New Mexico uh, uh, Finance Authority payment for the uh, water uh, renovation that occurred a few years ago. Beyond that, if you have any other questions, please let me know. On that one, you said it was for years previous? Yes, sir. So that won't happen again? We, we, we won't be getting another bill like that here again next month? No, we, we pay this every six months but to this organization. We have, a, it's a, a long-term loan with the uh, New Mexico Finance Authority that they gave us at a time when we needed to do upgrades to for treatment of our uh, water wells. And wastewater. Wastewater. Is this one the wastewater? Yes. Okay. One of them is for the waste. This is for our wastewater plant. You voted on it last time, Art. Okay. The last. <laughs> I've slept some yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> but we do have, just for clarification, three long-term debts. One is related to our home harmless gross receipt bonds. We'll be making another payment. You'll see on the next accounts payable list for that. Uh, then we have this one here for the sewer treatment plant and then another one related to our water uh, treatment that we had to do years ago. And I believe we have somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 years left to pay on both these loans and a little less than 20 years on the hold harmless. Well, hopefully we'll all be here. <laughs> I I've got one here. Uh, there's a bill here for diesel fire that's thirteen thousand four hundred thirty-five dollars and eighty-one cents, and then if you drop down another six, it's the same thing, one thirty-four thirty-five eighty-one. Did they charge us twice, or or is that just misprint or something? We're <coughs> looking at that one here. It said diesel fire. I'll have to double check that one because that does look like. It's Which one was that, Commissioner? I'm sorry. Sir? What was that again? Visa fire. Okay. It's got two of them. Oh, yeah, yeah. One shows a 1260 account, Gary. Is that different from the original visa, visa fire? Well, that's identifying which visa card we're okay. talking about. Oh, no, he's, he's talking the last line on page three. Oh, okay, okay. It says 13,000, yeah. no yeah. comma, and the other one has 13,000 comma. So it's probably a repetitive misstroke or something like that. So they're both identical. Mm -hmm. That would be an assumption on my part. Yeah, would you mind checking on that? Here. Oh. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to talk to the fire chief about why they're submitting the same invoices twice. Nice try, though. <laughs> we yeah, like uh, one more question. Yes, sir. This report balance says four hundred seventy nine thousand six hundred six dollars and sixty cents. Mm -hmm. What was that compared to last month? 
Appreciate you catching it, Commissioner. Good eye. All right. Any other discussion? So you will take into that? Yes, sir. I am going to look at the $13,435 fire visa expense. Okay, very good. Contingent that you do that, uh, we'll take it to a vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Motion carries. I'll entertain another motion for a closed session. Make, make a motion we're going to closed session pursuant to section 10-15-1 NMSA 1978 subsection H-2 regarding limited personnel matters employee resignation. Second. Right, we have a second. We'll now go into closed session. Get a roll call, please. Commissioner Gandy. Aye. 